We're here at CPAC Chicago, and uh, talk about a change of scenery. We are on the Heritage Foundation's Values Bus, which is travel around the country uh, for the Heritage Foundation. Our old friend from the Heritage Foundation, Hans von Spakovsky, is uh, my bus mate today. Now, Hans, is it true that this is Kid Rock's former bus? I think it, I think it was. <laughs> That's what I've been told. So I'm going to call you Kid Hans for the rest of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me, let's talk first about uh, Fast and Furious. How, uh, the, the fact that Eric Holder said in an, the emails that included Fast and Furious, he wasn't talking about Fast and Furious. How crazy can this story get? You know, he, he, is, he is showing that he is like the worst attorney general we have had in decades. I mean, we have never, ever had anyone who not only um, refuses to uh, comply with requests for documents from Congress, but can't even ask basic, uh, can't even answer basic questions about who, for example, in the top ranks knew about this operation that was causing, as you know, thousands of guns to go into Mexico and got an American border agent killed. A year and a half later, and he still can't answer basic questions about it? I mean, that shows that he is uh, either incompetent or, or intentionally uh, not wanting to find out exactly what happened in that. When you see a hearing like yesterday and you see the ISAs and the um, the Gaudis of the world really going after him, but then you see the other side, the Cummings of the world, um, trying to obfuscate and block, uh, what do you think this is, is the motivation for trying to get people so off topic when it comes to Fast and Furious? Well, they're clearly trying to provide political cover for the administration. And, you know, uh, they may think that's uh, politically what they're supposed to be doing, but that's not, their, that's not their job as members of Congress. You know, they're supposed to engage in active oversight. And when uh, the Justice Department, which is the chief law enforcement agency, puts an operation in place that gets an American agent killed and gets, we don't know how many people killed in Mexico. I mean, the, the last report I heard was hundreds. Um, it doesn't matter what political party they're in, uh, they should be wanting to uh, do oversight and getting to the bottom of what happened, who put the operation in place, who authorized it, and what exactly was done, and what is, what is the department going to do to discipline people to make sure it doesn't happen again. Let's move to uh, voter ID and, uh, and, and issues like uh, Florida wanting to purge their voter rolls, and the Department of Justice says, no, 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 no. You know, let, let us, you know, we want to talk about that first. Talk about that issue. Well, you know, anybody looking at the way this Justice Department, this administration operates, would think that they want to do everything they can to help vote thieves and to make sure that we don't have a fair and secure election. You know, they're, they're trying to prevent South Carolina and Texas from putting in voter ID laws, which is just a common sense, basic reform. And now, in the past week, uh, they have gone in and told Florida that uh, they're not allowed to take people who aren't U.S. citizens off the voter registration rolls, which is just, I mean, not only is it crazy, but they're wrong under the law. Uh, you know, they sent a letter down to Florida saying, you can't do this under the Voting Rights Act. You can't do this under the National Voter Registration Act, which is the motor voter law. That is wrong. It is a felony, a federal felony, to um, register to vote when you are not a U.S. citizen. And here we have the Justice Department telling Florida they can't take off the roll somebody who committed a felony when they registered. I mean, it's, it's, it's just crazy. It's, it's funny because uh, on Twitter the last couple of days you've seen these tweets that you needed a photo ID to get into the Massachusetts Democrats convention. Yeah. You need a photo ID to get Michelle Obama to sign your book. The hypocrisy is so rich. No, it, no, it is. And in fact, uh, you may have seen that in the oversight hearings yesterday, uh, one of the members of Congress pointed out that if he wanted to go in and talk to Eric Holder at the Justice Department, he wouldn't be able to get in without a photo ID. It's amazing. Um, let's wrap it up talking um, about the big issue here at CPAC Chicago is, of course, the election of 2012, uh, Mitt Romney versus Barack Obama. Um, if there were to be a second Obama term, what would it mean to issues like the DOJ and, and, and what, we were ta what we've been talking about this whole time? Uh, I, I think law enforcement in the United States would really suffer. Um, th this is the most politicized Justice Department I, I can ever remember, and I say that as a veteran of the department. Um, Politics drives every law enforcement decision, everything from Operation Fast and Furious to this opposition to voter ID laws. And 
the American people should realize that that's dangerous. You know, the Justice Department is very powerful. Uh, they're the chief law enforcement agency of the United States. And you do not want an agency that has politics driving its decision making. And if, um, if this president is reelected, uh, and he doesn't change who the attorney general is, he doesn't change who the other political appointees are there, um, they could do things even worse than they've already done. And like I said, that to me is dangerous to the liberty and freedom of Americans. Do you think anything will happen to Eric Holder? Well, I think it should because I think his defiance of Congress, at the very least, ought to cause him uh, to resign. If not, I, I actually think uh, he should be held in contempt by the House for refusing to uh, comply with and uh, respond to the investigation being conducted by the House. Kid Hans von Spakovsky from the Heritage <laughs> Foundation. Thanks for letting us on the bus. Cameron, it's always good to talk to you.